It's a Thursday. It's August 7th, 2025. Your day with a podcast brought to you by the Advocates Injury Attorneys. If you've been injured in an accident, don't face it alone. Get an experienced local Wyoming attorney on your side. Free consultations at wyomingadvocates.com or call 307-800-1952. You deserve an advocate. Well, a cold front is approaching. In the meantime, more thunderstorms along the edges, the periphery high pressure, like this isolated thunderstorm that you can see there. That thunderstorm was visible from Cheyenne and it was all the way up between Torrington and Lusk. This time of year when we start to see the monsoon kind of in patches, you'll get these isolated thunderstorms like that. And that will continue along today. This means it's gonna be busy for you folks in the Northern Plains and the far Northern Rockies. You're gonna see severe weather today and tomorrow as that moisture's kind of consolidated up there. Now elsewhere, in the Rockies, very low humidity and wind is going to make for extremely high fire danger today and tomorrow because low humidity and the wind combined with very warm temperatures will make things primed if a fire gets started. So be careful out there the next 48 hours in particular. Now this front is strong as we've been showing you and temperatures are going to be quite cool behind it. We're going to see upslope. What will happen as we get into Saturday and Sunday is you'll see the front range of Colorado, parts of southeastern Wyoming, far western Kansas and Nebraska get into a cool upslope where we're going to see the winds come uphill from the plains into the front range areas, producing clouds, showers and thunderstorms and cooler temperatures. But the cold front is not going to be able to penetrate areas west of the divide and really do much other than a few isolated showers and thunderstorms. So temperatures will go down into uh, down to considerably in areas along and east of the divide. Still some smoky, hazy conditions, making for pretty pictures. We'd like to see the smoke go away, but we do have places where we don't have it, like a beautiful shot there from the Sierra Nevada in California and down into New Mexico. Beautiful shot there, a lot of colors and also clear skies in the Wind River Mountains yesterday. So depending on where you are, it's either smoky or hazy or you've got blue sky like you're seeing in the photo there. The satellite photo this morning shows a couple of things to notice. First of all, there's a swirl of clouds. Here's that trough of low pressure over Southwest British Columbia. We do have this little fetch of subtropical moisture here, but it's up high, it's not deep. So this will produce a few isolated showers and thunderstorms here, but mainly just the kind that produce gusty winds and not a lot of rain. But the deeper moisture is up here and ahead of this low, combined with that moisture, we're gonna see an active thunderstorm pattern. So you can see where the precipitable water is today, coming in off the California coast, up into Western Canada, then along the Northern Plains. It's this area right here around the edges, the periphery, where things are gonna pop over the next couple of days. And this afternoon, this is where the thunderstorms are gonna be popping up again in very similar situation to where they were yesterday. Now up here in North Dakota, Eastern Montana, later today, we're gonna to see a cluster of thunderstorms. And we're gonna see this for two days in a row where thunderstorms develop in the same area later in the day then they continue into the evening and overnight hours. In this area, thunderstorm activity as it heads east could become severe. So you can see the, uh, we have an enhanced area. In North Dakota, still some high probabilities of severe weather in the yellow there. In eastern Montana, into parts of South Dakota and Minnesota, then extending a little notch, goes down here into north central areas in Nebraska. So moisture around the edges, that ring of fire is where things are gonna to be today, but also tomorrow, same area. Same area will be a little bit further east, but we're gonna see another cluster of showers and thunderstorms develop two nights in a row. So for you folks up in the Northern Plains, the Dakotas, into Western Minnesota, Northwest Iowa, Eastern Montana, and you can see even into far Northeastern Wyoming, there's gonna be some activity. Further west where the air's drier, there won't be much. And look what happens Tomorrow, see, see how the pattern just kind of repeats itself? Very similar setup. So we'll see the thunderstorm cluster maybe start a little bit further east tomorrow afternoon. But look what happens tomorrow night and then into Saturday morning. It's a mouthful, but we, we said this not long ago. Mesoscale convective complex. 
This is where you get the derechos, where you get these organized thunderstorms that can produce a lot of wind and a lot of severe weather. And that's going to be going across the northern plains in the northwest Corn Belt here over the next two days. Something to keep an eye on. Now, once we get beyond that time frame, we get into Friday with that trough moving east. That's why you're going to see that severe weather push a little bit further east. So here's the trough. A cool front is going to be coming through during the day Friday, and it is going to cause a lot of wind. The wind picks up today. So this is the accumulated wind between today and tomorrow. So you can see there's a wide area. Now, these aren't crazy winds, but you combine these winds with low humidity, hot temperatures. That's why fire dangers are going to be so high. Now, the winds will calm down considerably for the, the weekend. But for today and tomorrow, as the front approaches, be ready for the wind along that I-25, I-80 corridor, especially across Wyoming and the wind prone areas of the central Rockies. As we see the cooler air advancing, this is by 6 p.m. Friday. So you can definitely see where the cold front's going to be during that time frame, with the coolest of the air relative to average across Montana and the northern Rockies, but even back into the Pacific Northwest here. And that's for the day on Saturday. The front and the coldest air wants to stay in areas further north, but it does want to push further south and east during the day Saturday and into the day on Sunday. By noon Sunday, the main trough is moving into uh, Manitoba, getting up into areas just northwest of Lake Superior there. And then as we uh, look at the winds aloft, still coming in from the northwest here. So the temperatures on Sunday east of the divide will still be warm while the heat will return to California and the deserts. Thunderstorm activity in the upslope will form. These are the temperature anomalies for Sunday afternoon. So you can see where the upslope really will knock temperatures down from southeastern Wyoming into the front range of Colorado on into the plains while it is warm west of the Continental Divide. As the winds move uphill or upslope behind the front at the lower levels, we're going to get showers and thunderstorms. So this is Saturday's shower and thunderstorm activity. And you can see it's really concentrated where the upslope is. We got a little bit of a monsoonal surge for Southern Arizona comes in, but dry elsewhere. So that's Saturday. And then Sunday, we kind of see the, the moisture coming up further north into Eastern Wyoming, front range of the plains of Eastern Colorado. But look at that dividing line, which we've seen all summer, where the upslope will really make a big difference on the other side of the mountains, not so much. But southern New Mexico, Arizona here, you're going to have kind of a, a more active thunderstorm pattern than you would think because there's just a little bit of that monsoon trying to come back. It's just obviously not going to get further north. Temperatures will really fall east of the divide. Thunderstorm activity will need to be watched for some maybe some strong to severe thunderstorms. That's possible in some of these front range areas Saturday and Sunday. Next week, we basically rinse and repeat another trough, now not as strong, enters the Pacific Northwest because that Pacific high is there. So this will likely bring another frontal system, suppress temperatures from getting too hot again, and also suppress the monsoon, at least for the beginnings of next week. Beyond the middle of next week, the pattern shifts a bit. And you can see where the moisture is going to be by Wednesday of next week more in the east and more along the northern tier. But we're starting to gather some green again down here in Mexico. And as we get to the 18th of August, kind of that date we've been targeting, the high shifts east, there's a little, the, the models want to see a little dimple here, a little bit of a wave coming off the Pacific, probably from down here and rotating around the high. So as we get, let's say, beyond Wednesday of next week, through the following weekend, into the early parts of this week, will be another opportunity for subtropical moisture to come back northward. And we'll just have to see if that happens or not. Have yourself a great Thursday. We'll see you tomorrow.